we will now study the electrical emergency configuration. As there are a lot of events which happen at the same time in the aircraft, we will show these events in a sequential order. Let's assume we are in flight and no previous faults have occurred. As you can see, the first consequence is that the power supply for the first officers PFD and ND, the captain's ND, and the lower ECAM is lost. The SOP recommend in such a case that the captain will fly the aircraft while the first officer does the ECAM action. Note, another consequence is the loss of MCDUs 1 and 2. Observe that on the emergency electrical power panel, the red RAT and emergency generator fault light is illuminated, meaning that the emergency generator is not yet online. After a short lapse of time, the RAT and the emergency generator light disappears. The emergency generator is now running and supplying the system. Notice that with the emergency generator online, the power supply to the captain's ND has been restored. Note, MCDU1 is also recovered. On the engine warning display, you can read that the autopilot has disengaged. Let's deal with this first. To continue the procedure, we will clear this line by pressing on the clear key. Read the title of the failure. The red emergency configuration title means that you are in an electrical emergency configuration. The red message, land ASAP, orders to land as soon as possible. Observe that you have to maintain a minimum speed when the red is extended. Caution! Below this minimum speed, the rat will stall, and the aircraft will only be supplied by the batteries. On batteries only, expect to flight approximately 20 minutes. The pilot flying will ask you to perform the ECAM actions. You will try to reset the generators. Here, this will be done for you. The reset of the generators has not been successful. Before continuing with the procedure, let's look at how to access an ECAM page when the lower ECAM is not available. An ECAM page can be called up on the upper ECAM by pressing and holding its associated push button key on the ECP. The page is displayed on the upper ECAM as long as the associated key is maintained pressed. On the ECAM electrical page, note that the emergency generator supplies the AC essential bus and, via the essential TR, the DC essential bus. As soon as the ECP push-button switch is released, the engine warning display is displayed on the upper display. As the previous reset of the generators was not successful, we will carry on with the procedure by pressing the bus tie push button switch. The bus tie push button switch in the off position segregates the two sides of the system. By doing this, a short circuit can be isolated and might give you the possibility to reset one generator. The procedure asks you to try to reset the generators again. Here, this will be done for you. Again, the reset of the generators has not been successful. As the next steps concern other systems, we will stop here and study the indications on the right side of the engine warning display.
Notice the Amber Nav, Flight Control, and Auto Flight System titles. This means that these systems are affected by the failure. Their related procedures are stacked after the current one and will appear with the completion of the emergency configuration procedure. During the procedure, some secondary failures will appear. As the lower ECAM is not available, you will have to manually call the ECAM pages associated with these secondary failures on the engine warning display. You have to press and hold the related key on the ECP in the same way that you previously called the ECAM electrical page. We will now assume that the electrical emergency configuration procedure is finished and all the ECAM pages of the secondary failures have been reviewed. As you cleared the last one, memo messages appeared on the engine warning display. The green rat out memo message confirms that the rat is no longer stowed. The green emergency generator memo message indicates that the emergency generator is running and supplying the system. You will have the opportunity to practice the emergency electrical configuration procedure during your simulator sessions. We will now study the case of a rat stall. At low speed during the approach, the emergency generator is no longer powered and the supply is automatically transferred to the batteries. The ECAM electrical page has been called for you. Observe that the emergency generator indications have disappeared. As the battery discharge current is high, the current indications are displayed in amber. The batteries feed the DC essential bus and via the static inverter, supply the AC essential bus. Both shed essential buses are automatically shed, which is indicated by amber shed indications below their respective buses. Notice that during this phase, the APU start is inhibited. On the ground, the DC BAT bus is automatically connected to the batteries. At low speed, the AC essential bus is shed, leading to the loss of all screens. Note, a PU can be started as soon as we are on ground and the speed is below 100 knots. We will now review some indications we did not have the opportunity to see when performing the previous procedures. As a result of the electrical failure, the rat is normally automatically deployed. During the rat extension, the electrical system is powered from the batteries. The approximate flight time on batteries is 20 minutes. Let's see what happens if the rat fails to deploy automatically. If the rat fails to extend, a specific line appears in the emergency electrical procedure telling you to manually extend the rat on the emergency electrical power panel. We will do it for you. After a rat extension, if the emergency generator is not working, the red fault light stays illuminated on the rat and emergency generator indicator. This failure causes the aircraft to be powered only from the batteries. Let's assume we are in flight. A Gen 2 overload fault just occurred. Observe the Gen in load indications in amber on the ECAM electrical page indicating that the load is abnormal. The galley fault light comes on on the electrical panel, helping you to locate the switch. The galley will be switched off to reduce the load. Notice 
that there is no fault light in the generator 2 push button switch because the generator is still powering AC bus 2. As required, the galley push button switch has been switched off. On the Akame Electrical page, the galley shed indication has appeared. The generator 2 load is back to a normal value. In case of smoke detection in the avionics bay, the amber smoke light illuminates on the Gen 1 line push button switch. A master caution and an ECAM procedure are also triggered. When the Gen 1 line push button switch is pressed to off, generator 1 is disconnected from the system. The avionics smoke ECAM procedure leads to the shedding of the main bus bars. In this case, the electrical system configuration is the same as in emergency, except for the fuel pumps, which remain supplied.